People will do anything for a bit of clout, whether that is faking videos, including break-ins to their own house, or reacting to videos, and then posting it on their channel. Let's take a look. Break-in. The phenomena of the fake YouTube family has become more and more common over the years. I hate if you this don't know so what much. I mean, there's a sect of YouTubers whose whole brand is showing off their wealth and concocting fake dramatic events for clicks. Most of the time, they portray themselves as perfect, unless they need a few more clicks. Then they Dude, I hate this YouTube family stuff. I think if you have this one of these YouTube family channels, you should probably get banned. Because it's just exploiting kids. That's what it is. The 99% of the time, it's just like, oh, Jimmy did this. Pippin fell over. Jimmy's first kiss at the park. Jimmy's first day of school. Jimmy falls down the stairs again. Whoops, a daisy. He's crying. Uh oh. That's disgusting. I really don't like manufactured it. Manufactured drama and become poor, hard done by babies. While the Ace family is hey, this stereotype kids. at its very worst. Comprised of Austin McBroom, his wife Catherine, and their three children, their YouTube channel has over 18 million subscribers. And what? Content. Okay, well, does anyone... I, I, uh, I'm gonna have to start a family channel, aren't I? When I start truly falling off, when it's the end of days for me, I'm just gonna have to find a family and make a family channel. They've been at the center of countless crazy controversies. Not even start a family, just join one. And they caused <laughs> arguably the most infuriating when they uploaded a video titled, Someone Broke Into Our House. Damn, 29 minutes suspicious long. suspicious when Austin pointed out that the so-called invaders hadn't stolen any of the extremely valuable electronics scattered around the family's home. Okay. The video only gets weirder when one of the policemen who arrived on the scene acts like this. Hey, my guy right here, he's helping us out. He's part of the Ace family. He's part of the Ace family? He's like, yo, I'm so hyped to be here, dude. I love your vids. Oh, man. Sucks that you got broken into, though, bro. Sucks that you got broken into. Anyway, yo, can I get a pick real quick? No, 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 just quickly. Well, it turns out this man isn't an officer at all. Somebody recognized him as an actor who can be hired as a fake cop. A viewer contacted what? the company representing the fake officer and, by posing as the McBroom's financial advisor, managed to get a copy of the receipt. No shot. Police actor five. Cop car five. Sheriff. Dude, they sprung for the sheriff as well? Damn, they went all in on this. Not other than yeah, isn't this illegal? McBroom. Yikes. Is this real, of though? Of course, the McBrooms refute this and deny the event was staged. But if I was broken into, I wouldn't worry about posing for a banger YouTube thumbnail. That is a crazy thing to do. Pose for the thumbnail, like, I kind of get it. If this was real, you'd still do the same thing. You're like, okay, we have to make the best of this. That we can. We're gonna have to pose for the thumbnail. All right, make sure you got your face palm going on there. Uh, little, little Derek or whatever her name is. <laughs> I don't know if this is real or not. We could see that the receipt is fake, potentially. They spent almost 5K on fake cops, which to be honest, for a channel with 18 million subscribers, that's chump change for them. They don't care about that. That is a business expense. They're gonna make so much more from that video. I mean, look, 17 million views on what, like a 29 minute video? Like, they, dude, it's a business expense. It's basically nothing for them. Well, would you? And this wouldn't be the last time they'd get into trouble. Since then, the family's been the target of multiple lawsuits totaling millions of dollars. Jeez. Unfortunately, despite claiming that they'd quit YouTube at the end of 2022, the family Thank is God. still uploading oh, videos no. in 2023. Okay, wait, 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 okay. But to be fair, yes, they're still uploading videos. I don't think that's bad that they're still uploading videos. As long as you're not like exploiting the kids. As long as you're not doing like a daddy 05, like, oh, Billy fell down the stairs again. Uh-oh, Billy got, Billy smacked Dilly in the face. He, oh, we got the crying on camera. As long as they're not doing that, okay, well, they're still doing, like, the kid stuff, which is, I don't know, I feel like this is kind of weird. I, kids does not need to be in a YouTube video like that. You could just focus on, like, the parents. I understand that you're a parent, and being a parent is, like, a full-time job, but you could do stuff outside of that, too. You don't have to bring the kids into it. It's just really strange. Sounds like it's time for another lawsuit to me. <laughs> Sketchy sign-off. Also, did we ever actually find out whether or not this video was fake? Did they fake being robbed for views? Let's see. Internet sleuths and drama channels has been all over this. According to the official crime mapping service provided by the Los Angeles Police Department, there was a burglary reported on the same block as the Ace family home on 15th of August at 2 p.m. 
Unfortunately, we can't confirm this specific address because of the crime mapping service puts their records through exclusive data scrubbing process that works to locate each crime incident geographically to the hundredth block. So we know that there was a crime burglary incident in that area, but we don't know if it was actually theirs. Update, Keemstar has since posted what he claims to be the actual police incident report from the burglary. All right, so we have the police report here, which was the 17th of May. Is, that, is this the date here? It looks like the 17th of May. Very interesting. Below is a tweet from the 16th saying that they were robbed that night, not the 15th. Oh, wow, interesting. Okay, so it was the... Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, if, if this was on the 17th of May, and then they post it on the 16th of August, that doesn't line up, does it? And then they make a, a big a big tweet here. If they actually did get breaking into, then making a video of it is kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> I mean, you gotta make your money back somehow, right? But if they did fake it, that's totally scummy. I don't know one way or the other. I can't say. Seems like they might have faked it, but... All gamers know that eventually... Can't say for sure. ...best games get old. So you stop playing them and move on, right? Well, if your name's Sketchek, apparently not. Sketchek joined YouTube back in 2011 and quickly became known for posting impressive montages of him playing the online shooter Team Fortress 2. Hundreds of thousands of people flocked to see his skills, and by 2015, he'd accumulated a healthy fan base of subscribers. That's Everything good for Team Fortress 2? That's so good. Until one day, he suddenly released a video titled Closure, where he announced he had a terminal illness and wouldn't be able to upload anymore. What? Dad, he said goodbye to a devastated audience of fans oh my and God. uploading. Despite his That's absence, awful. SketchX's legacy lived on, with countless tributes pouring in for the fallen gamer. Oh Team my Fortress God, that 2's sucks. developer Valve even immortalized him in game with an item effect called SketchX Bequest. And That's nice of that? them. SketchX was gone. Or was he? Three years later, Reddit user Alpha Owl made a detailed post on the Team Fortress 2 subreddit with some startling revelations. For one, the closure video had been privatized. So someone must have logged in to SketchX's channel to do so. Hmm. I guess it could be like a friend or a parent. Say that people had found his public profile on the gaming platform Steam and added him as a friend. Shockingly, the invitations were accepted. Oh, <laughs> what? Really Why would you accept it? That his SketchX friend was sent this ominous gift. Turns what? out the gift contained cryptic binary on it that, when what? translated, led people down a wacky internet rabbit hole of obtuse images and private videos. Bro, Eventually, what is going those on? Following the trail came to a video that wasn't private. Though it's since been taken down, it featured none other than Sketchik himself promising new content after the three year break. People what? were annoyed he was alive, but they. Wait! He literally made his own ARG to announce that he had faked his own death? That he pretended that he lied about cancer? That's the most insane thing I've ever heard! You were like, you, you make your own game! for people to find out that you just lied about having cancer. I also had some big questions. Like, you know, what the heck happened to him? Well, later on, Skechik provided the answers, and they were shocking. The gamer wasn't just alive, he'd never been ill at all. Sometime in 2015, he decided he was gaming too much for his own good. So rather than announce his retirement like a normal human being, he, uh... Faked his own death. Well, okay, in 2015, saying that you have cancer and then just like dipping was probably not that like surprising. There would probably people that would go around and be like, oh, I play too much video games. Like that's uh, saying that that's a form of cancer because it was 2015 and people did edgy shit like that all the time. Not to say that that's okay. Just saying that it's probably not as crazy uh, as it would be like if you did it nowadays. In such a dramatic way, so it'd be really hard for him to return. Only it didn't work. He ended up missing Team Fortress so much that he devised a grand scheme to announce his resurrection. But the guilt of lying to so many people proved too much and he ended up admitting to the whole sordid affair. Just make a new account. People were pretty appalled. So much so that Valve removed his name from the endgame item effect. Fair. Ouch. The YouTuber yep. admitted what he did was wrong and apologized for his actions, though his grand return to YouTube didn't turn out so grand after all. As of this video's release, his last upload was about a year ago. To be fair though, with 228,000 views on that, let's not like he's struggling for views. He's still getting a fair amount of views. He's probably getting a fair amount of abuse as well. At least he was honest in the end. 
which is more than I can say about who we've got next. But now seems like his- He said he was tired of playing the game and wanted to leave, but was worried about his fans' reactions, so he did all of this. He was worried about his fans' reactions, so he said he had cancer? Dude, I can't imagine how you come to that conclusion. How many hops, skips, and jumps in logic you need to make for that? What time is any to remind you that Honesty is my middle name. If you don't want to miss out on any more incredible true stories like this one, then be yeah. sure to smack the like and subscribe button. I up. mean, all, all right, right, okay. Let's wait back I, into the mud. I will. Pod. Okay, I TikTok guess I will. Bro. If TikTok has taught us one thing as a species, it's that humans will do pretty much anything for attention. One True. user named Ticks and Roses took this to a whole new level of extreme. They rose to internet fame back in 2020 for raising awareness of Tourette syndrome. Ticks and Roses, okay, good aka stuff. Emerald, regularly vlogged their daily life in the extreme verbal and physical outburst, or ticks, they were subject to. Oh no, are they gonna fake having Tourette's? That's insane. Oh, oh no. I can tell that's exactly what's gonna happen here, right? What, did she just... I'm not, I don't want to sound insensitive by any means here. Is eating something something that will happen with Tourette's? Is that a tick? Because I know that you can have physical ticks, you can have like vocal ticks, you'll say something that you don't mean. I don't know much about Tourette's. Would you like, would you eat it? I, don't, I, I genuinely don't know. They also ran an online yarn dyeing business, which they promoted on their Ticks and Roses account, as well as a separate dedicated account. Hi, this is Emerald with Stardust Fiber Studio. I am one of the owners. <laughs> I also do um, awareness videos for Tourette's on TikTok. Now here's the rub. When some of these separate videos became more well known, viewers noticed that Emerald was on camera for minutes at a time without a single tick. That, okay, that doesn't prove anything though. There's lots of people with Tourette's that can just like contain themselves. They can like hold it back. I mean, I, I'm assuming it takes a lot of mental willpower, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are faking it. There's a streamer that I've seen that has Tourette's, who's the only person I think that know I that has Tourette's, apart from like Ethan Klein, I think, from H3H3, he has it as well, uh, the sweet Anita. And she said that she can like hold it in, or like in certain situations, it's not as prominent. Or if you're like more nervous, then they come out more. If you're more calm, then you can kind of like, you can, you can hold it back. So I don't, I mean, just being on, camera for a few minutes without ticking is normal, right? The public had seen just how frequent and explosive their ticks were on their main account, so what the heck was going on? Emerald dismissed concerns by saying it was possible for them to go short periods without any symptoms, which satisfied people, until a 54-minute live stream of Emerald emerged promoting their yarn company in which they didn't tick once. The okay, well, 54 minutes is, you know, that's a that's a really long period of time. Not saying that's not possible, that is possible, but that's a really long period of time. I, but I guess if you are faking it, like, you'd have to be hypervigilant on that. You would have to know that you gotta do it, like, every few minutes at the very least to keep up the charade. The pressure was on. In an effort to prove their story, Emerald posted a video sharing what they claimed was their most recent doctor's note. A good okay. strategy, if it didn't look so fake. Okay. Yep. Commenters pointed out that PTSD was listed twice in Emerald's medical history. All right. Don't use the word kid and most damning. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty hard. Very pleasant 24, 27 year old left-handed lady. Okay. Uh, she notes that the tick started at age six, six to seven. Uh, sure. PTSD li listed twice. Damn. There's a lot of syndromes here. Holy crap. I ain't. Oh, wow. My, my, would migraines be listed alongside PTSD and autism? Of all, is that like a, as important of a thing? Was wrong. Also, they dude, they tried to. <laughs> this is this is and so dumb. All, they tried to I, like unhighlight it, but you can still read it. Like, come on, man, you can still read everything on there. Hospital logo on the note was wrong. In response, Emerald deleted the video and their entire Instagram. This really annoyed people. Real Tourette sufferers started reacting to their videos, pointing out anything they thought was fake, and a subreddit was even set up to gather evidence against Emerald. Then what? Okay, I hate internet detectives like this. I don't like it when people lie on the internet. That's pretty bad. But opening up an entire ass subreddit so that you can investigate and expose certain people, that is even more deranged. Case in point, Doc Phil, who's a bit of a lol cow, you know, someone that people on the internet poke fun of all the time because, you know, he's a little bit of a weirdo, he's kind of a dick sometimes. But people go so in depth on this. People every single day just make videos constantly about him. Look at all these videos. 
DSP tries a new scam. DSP wants $300. DSP's road to passing out. Look at this dude post three videos in one day just clipping his streams. And there is an entire ass subreddit just shitting on him constantly. One person. It's like, for the love of God, if you are on a subreddit that is specifically dedicated to just hating one person, please reevaluate yourself. Do you genuinely think that you are using your time in a better way than this person is that you dislike so much? Do you think that this is a good use of any part of your life? A percentage of your existence on this earth is just going into making fun of a guy constantly and finding out all the inner lore about their parents and their family tree and their backstory, pointing out any kind of lie that you can find them in. It's just so weird. Then something happened that blew the whole thing wide open. Emerald's sister posted on the subreddit confirming Emerald didn't have Tourette's. Oh, oh no! Ties with their family years before, despite them only wanting the best for them. But their sister. Oh, I don't know. I feel like there may be something else going on behind the scenes. Wanting the best for someone and having them cut ties with your family—that could mean anything. That could be like, we want the best for you, but you know, you're gay, so we have to do gay conversion therapy on you because we want the best for you. That could mean anything, they right? And a history of twisting the truth. After this revelation, Emerald posted one last video announcing they were done with raising awareness for Tourette's. They didn't tick once the whole duration. Then they deactivated their Ticks and Roses account. Although they posted a few more times- How do we know that the sister was actually the sister as well? Like, what kind of- that did she actually give proof that she was the sister, or were we just taking her word for it? Are we assuming that someone would not lie on the internet in this case about someone lying on the internet? I don't know. Account, they stopped in June 2021 and haven't been seen since. Phew, what a strange, sad tale. Surprisingly, faking disorders is an increasingly common occurrence on the internet. Despite how- Yeah, this is a situation of someone faking someone- something fake- someone faking something for internet clout, and then people going completely off the walls trying to get justice or expose them and being ten times as weird as the original person. How disrespectful it is. You think we've seen the last of Ticks and Roses? I'm not so sure. Let me know down in the comments. Yeah, probably. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make an account after this anyway. Chocolate bar. Mm, if you like delicious. candy, London's Leicester Square is home to the biggest candy store on earth. At a I love when Americans try to pronounce like British words and they, they kind of struggle a little bit. You could hear them like stop halfway through Leicester Square. It's like Leicester Square. I love when Americans try to say Worcestershire. A whopping 35,000 square feet. Jeez. The colossal store is called M&M's World. And it's so fantastically chocolatey that make Willy Wonka himself. Looks proud. good. According to TikTok user Stuart Laws, however, candy isn't the only thing the place sells. We are looking for the secret cocktail bar. We're looking for a lift. Cocktail bar? bar? <laughs> At the moment, it feels like we're going to have to go down. To There's always a secret cocktail yes, in bar. In December 2021, Law shared a video of him searching for a supposed secret cocktail bar. Do they have a love tunnel? Bar inside Yo, the hope store. So. I mean, the place is massive, so there could be one, right? Like a secret. Why would it be secret? Opening up. What are you doing? Closed. Believe it or not. Bro, this is not Harry Potter. This is not Hogwarts. It's not like you can just pull down a lantern or move a painting and a secret door is going to reveal itself, man. This is just a business. Trust me, if there was a cocktail bar, you'd know about it because they want to make money uh, on it. That didn't work. Yet, lo and behold, just seconds later, So let's no, you didn't. Get this out of that's, the way. That's juice. No, there is no secret M&M's World Cocktail Bar. These two are stood in what looks like a restroom holding drinks they brought in with them for that sweet TikTok class. I mean, that's a nice glass that's though, right? All. The drinks don't even look that good. How do I know this? Well, one of the store's employees debunked it in Law's comment section. Boom. Granted, there are also- That's such a weird thing to lie about. I mean, it, it's just harmless. It's a harmless little lie. It's just strange. I don't even think that that's bad of a thing. I think it's kind of funny that if people believe that and they go to the place trying to find the cocktail bar and just waste their time. I think that's kind of funny, I to be honest. Jokingly talking about entering the bar themselves, but there's absolutely zero evidence this place actually Hold exists. Hold up my Discord by accident. Sorry Oz about that. is a producer, director, and comedian, so he posted the video knowing that any publicity is good publicity. He'd even tweeted the idea a couple of months beforehand. So forget cocktails, but old Law definitely left with his tail between his legs. I don't think that's that bad at all. Uh, I think that's kind of funny. You should you should do it again. Just keep doing it. Just just lie on the internet on purpose for fun. It's Fishy harmless. Fisherman. Now I'm no fisherman. Wait, I think I've seen these. To catch a fish, you need the right bait. 
Something like a worm or insect larva, right? Ah! No, I don't like that. Is that Pokeball? And Mantos and a tackle box. Yet back in 2019, a bizarre fishing video uploaded by the YouTube account Technique Tools went viral and it appeared to use those exact things as bait. The fisherman pours the on ingredients into this suspicious hole, and within seconds, catfish suddenly come flying out of it. Oh, wasn't this that they just like shoved them through the other side so it only had one way to swim? I'm pretty sure it was. Um, what? Yeah, use Coke for bait because catfish love the delicious taste of a good Coca-Cola. Is this an ad for Coke? The internet was sent into a frenzy and before long copycat videos were popping up all over the place, supposedly showing similar techniques. Wait, did they all fake it in the exact same way then? They must have. They must have spread. They, they must have a group chat and they show everyone else how to make it work. You know what? This is elevating everyone. This is a rising tide raises all ships. They're trying to help each other out through the lie of catching catfish. But how the heck did it work? Well, the most prominent theory suggested that the hole led to a larger body of water and that the egg attracted hungry catfish, which swam over from it. Then the violent reaction between the cola and Mentos created a huge amount of carbon dioxide. This started to suffocate the fish, making them leap out of the water and into the clever fisherman's hand. <laughs> they, they leapt out of the water to get a breath of fresh air. <laughs> I've got to admit, it does sound kind of plausible, in a wacky way. As strange as it sounds, catfish really do like bird eggs. They're a brilliant source of protein. However, cracking one into- I mean, it's really hard to get them when you're a catfish. You can't just pop along to Asda like you usually would if you're a human. You have to, you have to be creative. You have to hope that some crazy fisherman's gonna come and give you some eggs one day. Well, in the ground isn't gonna get you the catch of the day. And pouring cola in as well is just a waste of good soda. Yep, the reality- I mean, is it though? Like, is it that good? I mean, Coke's fine, I guess. It's, it's not the, videos it's not the best. Are all big, fat frauds. Before filming, the creators would dig a hole in the ground and create a and they made animation for this. to a second hole out of camera shot. That's After right, I knew it. Yep. themselves, pouring the mix of foodstuffs into the first Don't they hole, put the catfish the in? The person would push fish down the other yep. hole, forcing them to swim through the tunnel and pop out the other end. Technique Tools actually admitted this is what they'd done in some of their video descriptions before they deleted them. So at best, the videos are fake fishing techniques and at worst, animal cruelty. Suffoc yeah, it is animal cruelty. I was going to say it's harmless, but it's not actually harmless because the catfish is literally alive. I mean, people fish all the time. Is it, is it that much different? Can fish experience pain? I don't know if they can. I m imagine that they probably can. So if it hurts them, that's bad. You, If you're going to do fishing, then you want to kill them in the most humane way possible and then eat them, obviously. Advocating fish for views really isn't cool. Luckily, the fad seems to have been left very much. I mean, you could still eat catfish, though. What they probably still eat them, right? A copy catfish. And try it yourself, okay? Pranks for nothing. Oh no, not this dude. Sure, oh Christ, here we go. Those aren't too bad, but most of them are so chaotically cringe-inducing, they make me want to throw up. And prank channel should be banned. Every prank channel should be banned. There is not a single good prank on YouTube. They all suck. There's always just someone going around trying to ruin someone else's day. Just some clout-chasing asshole. Lazy TV. Active since 2011, Vitaly made a name for himself with various tasteless prank videos. He'd do everything from pretend to fart on people to antagonize and harass strangers' girlfriends at the beach. Why is every prank channel just let's go harass random people on the street? Is there nothing else that you can do apart from harass people? How he didn't get beaten up, I'll never know. Either way, the videos gained him a loyal following and a staggering number of views. He looks a little bit deranged. They probably scattered him a little bit. However, his audience began to notice a shift in the feel of his content. Then, during a confusing YouTube beef with fellow prankster FoozyTube, it came to light that Vitaly was faking his pranks. Though he'd started out filming real reactions, at some point along the way, he'd begun hiring actors to pose as members of the public. Okay, but what's worse though? Actually going out and harassing real people, or on the other hand, hiring actors. So you're not harassing real people, but it's a fake prank, so you're lying about harassing real people. What's worse? After the truth was out, Vitaly's reputation quickly deteriorated, and with it his following. Once seen as a controversial but genuine prankster, he was in- Yeah, the five-year-olds that continually watch these videos are like, Oh man, you're not actually ruining someone's day, you're just pretending to? Oh, dude, I used to look up to you, man. You used to be cool, you used to actually harass people, now you're just faking it. Damn, that sucks, gonna have to go and find, like, Leafy is here or something to watch instead. Increasingly viewed as nothing but a mean-spirited, money-grubbing faker. And things would go from bad to worse. 
After several run-ins with the law, one culminating in a five-day stint in an Egyptian prison for <clears throat> climbing the pyramids. Oh, dude, Italian you do not want to mess with the Egyptian police. I imagine that they will just lock you up. Like, they do not care. I've heard so many crazy things about Egyptian police before. It is, it's kind of crazy over there. Rock bottom. In April 2020, the YouTuber had a violent, unprovoked altercation with an innocent woman in Miami Beach and was arrested on home turf. As a result, he had to pay out $30,000 to the victim, but unfortunately swerved to prison. So Damn, looks nice in there. Dude, you got, okay, I mean, look, listen, you got your own water, like you got like a floating shelf. That's kind of nice, right? You got, you got a bed, you got a little hole in the wall that you can dig out of maybe. It's not looking so good. Anyway, if this was a apartment in like London, this would run you probably like 7,000 pounds a month. So, you know, you're getting a pretty good deal there. Big prankster is one thing, but violent criminal? There's no coming back from that one. Even so, he's still posting to YouTube and now even makes videos for uh, a more He still side. posts? Yeah, no thanks. What? I see enough. He has an OnlyFans? On Netflix. No, sure. He has an OnlyFans? <laughs> that's insane. Tools. I, I actually can't believe that. That's crazy. I knew IKEA shelving last week and ended up getting frustrated, eating a tub of vanilla ice cream and calling my dad to get him to do it instead. Dude, but some people are- Ikea furniture is genuinely so hard for me to deal with. I made a, uh, set, a bookcase, well, no, it's like a set of drawers recently. I had to get my mom to help me because I felt so, I felt so useless. If these things are impossible to make by yourself. You need at least two people to make them. better at constructing things than I am. Like Australian John Plan, who started the YouTube channel Primitive Technology back in 2015. Oh, I love this channel. I was it wondering where it went. A variety of things from shelters all the way Don't to. Don't tell me this is shows, fake. And uses nothing but the resources he can find outside to do so. Whoa. It's super impressive, and he's built a huge following on the platform. But with success comes imitation. Cheap imitation. Oh, thank God. So he's he's good, right? He's the good one. The idea channel is just one of these mimics and began uploading its own construction videos a year or so after Plant. The people behind it aren't happy with just lifting Plant's channel name and concept, though. They seem to want to outdo the original. So rather than shelters, their videos feature lavish over-the-top structures like Mushroom Kingdom? water parks, all supposedly made by hand. The only thing is, those hands weren't using sticks like the video makes you think. No they shot. Were using power tools and operating heavy machinery. Oh, what? this sucks. Yes. To put it bluntly, the videos are all lies. Look at this. See anything? off now let's zoom here yep there it is despite trying to portray the builds as only done by a small group of people with primitive tools extra no if you just try to make this on like a patch of grass that's gonna take you months to make there's no way as much as this is really cool that's a shame that they're just lying about it i swear to god if you just showed yourself using the power tools and you didn't lie about using your hands to make it people would still love this this is, this is still like super awesome. I think this is great. Just don't lie about using your hands to make it. Don't try and steal primitive technologies bits. Just have a different channel where you're like, yeah, we're gonna make really cool things in the ground. The workmen can clearly be seen in the background of certain shots. What's more, tire tracks left by an excavator can be seen out in the open on some video. No, this is just, we just have really big feet, that's all. And the long smooth cuts behind this guy were certainly not made by that stick. We have really Gosh. strong fingers. Who do they think they're fooling? Well, according to everyone, apparently six million, six million subscribers subscriber count a lot of people. So as embarrassing as this is for them, I'm sure all that YouTube money's helping lessen the shame. I yeah, you kidding me? Get over they're it, loaded. I can't cringe at three. No, no, answers. no. There's Jay one Station. YouTube trend so ridiculous. Okay, I did. Question my faith in humanity on multiple occasions. If you've never heard of it, prepare your world to be shattered. Real Here we go. Real are pretending to call up cartoon characters at 3 a.m. and acting terrified at the conversations that supposedly- But my god, those views. Guys, I'm sorry. If the views on my main channel don't start to pick up soon, I'm gonna have to call Ash Catchem at 3 a.m. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna have to get the views somehow. Listen, I've gotta buy my cat treats. He's gonna get cold at 3 a.m. if things don't stop moving on the upward trend soon. I'm just saying. And so, seriously, enter Jay Station, the single most infamous example of the 3 a.m. YouTuber. As cringy as this content is, <laughs> it is meant for children. And it's relatively harmless. If brain rot doesn't count as a disease, Jay Station. No, I, I don't think this is harmless. I think this is genuinely ruining our kids' brains.
<laughs> if, if you grew up re- watching J Station call Kermit the Frog at 3 a.m. and you're not, <laughs> listen, I, I grew up with the Disney movies and the Pocahontas, and I'm not trying to be one of those cringe old people like, ah, eh, back in my day, things were better. Now the kids have re- well, rotten their brain looking at TV screens all day. Because I know that I watched some dumb stuff when I was a kid as well, but no. This, it, that genuine brain rot, this is making our society worse. Nation's content wasn't all harmless, though. The hyperactive content creator used to post videos pretending to contact departed celebrities with a Ouija board, which is weird enough in the first place. Only he did it immediately after said celebrities had passed. That's so tasteless. Naturally, this disrespectful behavior was panned by adults familiar to the channel. Despite the host of negative criticism, though, Jay went out of his way to take things even further. In 2020, he posted he went Super a Saiyan 3. his girlfriend, Alexia, had tragically passed away in a car. Yeah, he did the Super Saiyan 3 AM, and he s- pretended that his girlfriend died, and then went, ooh, I'm gonna contact her on a Ouija board. Accident. In the now deleted video, Jay unconvincingly sobbed as he informed his followers of the news. Later, he uploaded another video supposedly visiting the spot where she lost her life to pay his respects. Why? I miss you. The funniest thing is the girlfriend just came out afterwards and like, it's like, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> With his Worst actor of all time. D- d- gr- actually, no, no, sorry, sorry. Greatest acting all of all time. Get this man on the next Breaking Bad, please. What? Look at this goat. With his untrustworthy past in mind, some people were rightfully skeptical about the sad turn of events but many gave him the benefit of the doubt. He couldn't fake anything as bad as that, right? Well, not yeah, long of course after the could. second video release, you kidding me? Jay uploaded a third, and this one would prove to be his downfall. It was another 3 a.m. challenge, but this time he claimed to contact Alexia's ghost via a Ouija board. Yeah. This is, imagine seeing a video go up of yourself saying that, oh, Paris died and I'm gonna contact him at 3 a.m. on a Ouija board. All right, guys, here we go. Gonna contact Paris at 3 a.m. I hope his ghost doesn't come to haunt me on this Ouija board. This is so freaky, guys. I, I hate that YouTuber voice. It makes me wanna game end myself. It makes me want to Minecraft myself out a window just pretending to do the voice. It's so awful. You heard that correctly. Following the release of this third video, a skeptical viewer rang the Toronto and Ottawa police services to inquire about Alexia and found out that, sure enough, no car accident had been reported. After this, Alexia revealed she was, in fact, still alive and had been coerced into faking her death by Jay as a ploy for views. Jeez. It takes a special kind of person to fake the passing of a loved one and an even more special person to try and profit from it. Jay. I think you could easily convince him not to do it by just saying, Jay, this is dumb as bricks. I'm not actually gonna be dead. I need to go outside and then immediately people will find out that I'm not dead. And Jay will say, no, but we're gonna put a mask on you every time you go outside and it'll be 3 a.m. so it'll be dark and no one will see you. And then you leave Jay because he's a fucking moron. I mean, I guess you could say if he's like, maybe marry him and then divorce him and take off his money first. Maybe do something like that. Is that special person? Well, it didn't pay this time. Jay lost his relationship, his channel, and what meager scraps of his reputation he had left. Yeesh. Since then, he's repeatedly created new channels to try and evade YouTube's wrath. All have failed, so stay tuned for my next video where I'll be- Is- is he got a channel right now? He has a YouTube channel, but it hasn't been posted on in six years. Epic 24 hour overnight challenge in Trump Tower. Oh my God. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic. If you'd like to see me fake a video, subscribe. And if you have a video you want me to watch, post it in my Discord server. Links in the description.